welcome. It's great, great to see you uh, here and uh, be with you in this moment to uh, celebrate, boast a little bit about what all of you have done uh, this year, what you've accomplished. It really is always breathtaking to me to step back, and it's hard to see it day by day, but when you get to the end of the year and see what this institution is accomplishing, it's, it's really amazing. And uh, then a lot to talk about on the budget front. It's fairly complicated. I'll just give you that uh, advance warning of kind of what we're dealing with, how we got there, how we're moving forward. So going to ask for your full patience and, uh, and uh, kind of engagement with me about, uh, about where we are. And to do that, it's going to be a lot of broadcast and still a fair amount of summary. But uh, as always, you'll be able to get the details of it. And uh, I think as you'll see as the presentation proceeds that uh, there's going to be lots more chance for campus collaboration and discussion about where we're going, what we're doing, uh, how the money's getting spent. So uh, to begin with, uh, just want to uh, compliment all of you for your effective moves on the great shakeout. Uh, just uh, out of curiosity, a little informal polling here. How many of you could clearly hear the public announcement uh, thing going? Okay. Let me ask you the other. Who, who, who did not hear? Ooh, okay. <laughs> uh, we got a, little, got a little work to do on that then. Uh, well, uh, that is a reflection of this uh, new public uh, announcement system we've had. And uh, it gives us yet uh, one more layer of protection for these emergencies and a way to communicate with people. Appreciate Robin Embermeyer and her, her group uh, going to work and preparing for us. We do take this stuff very seriously. Uh, as you, you may have heard, we did a, uh, an active shooter drill earlier in, in the year. We'll do a tabletop exercise with leadership on that same topic in the summer. We are always at work on this, concerned about your safety and well-being, thinking, planning for what we hope is the, the event that never happens, but we want to be doing our part for that. And I in, invite you to be active, engaged participants in thinking about how we make this a, a comprehensively safe and prepared uh, environment. Um, well, so in the past year, uh, some great things. Yeah, absolutely. The, these are not just two great athletic accomplishments. These are just two outstanding human beings and really do represent the best of UVU. We're going to honor them at, at graduation, at the commencement exercises. I'll say a little bit more about that, those exercises in a minute. But this is going to be, I think, uh, uh, really spectacular moment, so uh, please, if you've ever been inclined to come to commencement but haven't, this would, I think, be the year to do that. We're very proud of uh, Noel and Chris. Um, so now just, uh, this is one of those moments. I, I wish I could go on and on by every department and college. We, we obviously don't have time to do that here, but let me give you just a sampling of some things of really, truly, you know, regional, national, international distinctive uh, accomplishments that we had. But, you know, our public relations team beating out uh, over 160 uh, uh, other uh, teams competing for the Golden Spike Award, winning the best of show, uh, winning the best chapter in the nation for the PR Student Society, best in show, of the Associated College Press Conference, just a string of accomplishments there, very impressive. Uh, how about our men's basketball team? Absolutely. Uh, as I've said over and over again, I, I'm so glad that these guys have made me an honest man. Uh, I, I spent a couple of years going around this region, meeting with presidents, meeting with conference commissioners, and just saying, look, if you will let us into this conference, I promise you, we will be immediately competitive. And there was a little bit of skepticism there, and who are you, and where did you come from, and all that. Uh, and we won the very first conference championship right out of the blocks. The men's uh, cross country uh, uh, took home the first WAC championship of the year. 
And then uh, the men's basketball team wins the conference championship in the WAC marquee sport. Uh, I mean, we were it. We're, we're the WAC. And uh, I'm extremely proud of them. And, and want to give a special shout out to Holton Hunsaker, uh, Coach Hunsaker's son, an outstanding young man who's uh, academic, all-American, and again reflecting that this is not just a place of uh, athletics, it's first and foremost a place of academics, and he represents the very best of a student athlete. I think a round of applause for, for Holton. Uh, Back-to-back -back, uh, honors uh, with the Kennedy Center American College Theater Festival. Uh, this, is, uh, this is like, you know, uh, winning back-to-back -back NCAA championships in basketball. Uh, it's even better because one year was a play and one year was a musical. We've got variety and breadth, and I can tell you in the college theater, uh, fest in the college theater uh, uh, culture of this country, UVU is on the map, and we're extremely uh, uh, proud of uh, what they've accomplished. <laughs> Wasn't sure if that was for the last one or this one either. I just applaud whenever you want to. I'll be happy to stand and listen to it. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, again, a great sweep of our mission uh, on... Um, uh, from the four-year programs to the two-year trade programs, our Skills USA folks, uh, number two in the nation there at the Skills USA Championship. I've gone back to that, seen those, uh, seen those students in operation. They're really very impressive and always do a, a great job uh, at that. First place in the Utah Music uh, Teachers Association, Aaron Price, um, the Priscilla Payne Performance Award for high score in the National Accounting Exam. Uh, really some outstanding yeah, yeah. true national championship our dance team just back from Daytona Beach I uh, uh, got a really sweet note from uh, a, a colleague in the system who was uh, there uh, with with their team and just said I have to admit it no one held a candle uh, to your uh, dance team down there so uh, really uh, proud of them Then uh, great uh, recognition. We had uh, our, our students and our programs on the floor of the United Nations uh, 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 with some work uh, related to our Sustained Mountain Development Program. We've been invited to the prestigious National uh, Collegiate Choral Organization Conference. This doesn't happen. Uh, Reed Criddle's come in to just doing a fantastic job for us on that front. Uh, Award-winning uh, chefs uh, in the American Culinary Federation, Student Chef of the Year. Uh, a student uh, giving program that we won an award for from the National Case uh, Operation. This is the ultimate uh, you know, group for advancement and fundraising, beating out schools like Berkeley, UCLA, Stanford. Uh, and, and that's from our students, who are, many of whom are working and come from underserved populations. And, but our, our students are stepping up saying, we want to contribute, we want to help to the success of the institution. I'm, I'm very proud of that. So for, for all the students, uh, what they've accomplished this year, big round of applause. As we think about uh, some of the broader programmatic university things, I think a really rich uh, set of uh, lectures this year. Uh, I'm only highlighting some that were sort of more prominent on the university level, the presidential lectures and others. Uh, nationally recognized folks from different uh, perspectives, walks of life, uh, coming to talk about important things. This is just really, truly scratching the surface. I know at the department level, program level, level we always seem to have really thoughtful, engaged, uh, you know, uh, folks on this campus getting us to think better, more clearly, more creatively and that's continued this year. We hosted the Governor's Native American Summit with tribal leaders, over 200 participants. We opened the Barbara Barrington Jones We Care Center, dramatically expanding our capacity to provide a low-income daycare for our students uh, with children and even uh, a slice preserved now for faculty to take advantage of that. Had a, a magnificent gift from Todd Peterson personally and the Vivint Corporation 
to help us do something we were going to do anyway. We had heard from the business community that they really were looking for us to start a sales program. There's a real demand for it. But with this infusion of cash, uh, we again, as promised, said we could take something that would be regionally solid to make it uh, truly distinctive, if not nationally competitive. We're already off to the races with that. Just this last week, I got word that our students from the professional sales program went out, competed at uh, national competition in Louisiana, where we placed second in the nation, ahead of places like Wharton and other really well-established programs. So uh, extremely proud of what they've done. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, beg begun the process, uh, sort of uh, launched uh, the uh, first phase, if you will, of the Roots of Knowledge project. This is a spectacular stained glass uh, piece of artwork uh, that uh, will really be stunning and magnificent. This is just the first phase, that first panel that sweeps from the floor up to the ceiling in that uh, entryway of the library. It will then run all across that sort of undulating wall uh, on the west side of the library, chronicling uh, the great moments of art, architecture, poetry, uh, literature, history. Uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a stunning plan. We've got a great uh, dialogue going with the artist about uh, how, to, how, to, how to make it the best it can be, and uh, that's uh, now underway. Uh, really proud of our uh, accomplishments with the Latino Initiative. Uh, we recognize as one of the six best in the nation for our Latino outreach. Uh, the other schools coming entirely from either California or Texas. So for a non-border state to have distinguished itself in this way on a national scale really is impressive. Along with that, we've launched our Global Spotlight on Mexico, which has had a number of uh, really terrific uh, events this year. Um, we've, we've been active with the community, living up to our spirit of engagement, uh, had some wonderful coverage with our elementary program on robotics, hosted a major social summit with leaders from business, government, education, figure out how do we improve childhood literacy. We've got an army of, uh, of uh, tutors and interns going out to work, bringing university resources to bear on this really critical problem that has a difference for us. It, if we, if we don't get these kids on level by third grade, it's, it's basically a disaster moving forward, leaving lots and lots of remediation or just losing people in the cracks. And uh, so we've made substantial progress on that uh, this year. Celebrated the 25th anniversary of the aviation program. Yeah. We won eight awards at the National Intercollegiate Flying Association. So again, just continue our, our commitment to excellence uh, in, in that field as we uh, have expanded into that new college and we're very, uh, very happy about what's happening there. Broke the ground on our new 250,000 square foot classroom building. You can see how quickly we've been making progress there. Uh, and we've cut the ribbon on our new intramural fields over at the Geneva property. That property gives us uh, room to expand, uh, and, uh, and we're working on uh, securing even more property there if we can to really give the truly 30, 40 year horizon to this institution that we need. Uh, received a grant and have led the efforts to do something really distinctive and I think inspiring us, build an online world deaf library and museum uh, here. We're grateful for uh, Prof Professor Brian Eldridge and his work on that uh, and what it means for us academically and for a population that so easily can be marginalized or uh, overlooked and I think this is a wonderful thing. Uh, received an International Hero Award from the American Red Cross for our work, our prosthetic work in Guatemala and Samoa, hosted numerous ambassadors from um, uh, multiple countries and uh, make, I think, uh, great, do a, a lot of great world good in the process of that. So, uh, way to go. I mean, it's just unbelievable to me. Again, uh, so many more things that we could talk about. I wish we had time to just cover every great accomplishment that we do, but I think that gives you 
as both a sampling of the sweep and the quality of, of what you all are all creating here at this institution. And I know the effort that is reflected in that, the, the attention, the sacrifice, uh, and just the energy and creativity. It's just so, so fully on display. As we move forward now, a few things I want to call your attention to, uh, major events, uh, starting with today. Uh, if you've not snuck in there yet, uh, you have missed out. <laughs> we are going to cut the ribbon today on the Student Life and Wellness Center. This is a spectacular structure. Uh, the students uh, couldn't be more excited. I couldn't be uh, more excited for them. Um, we, uh, we actually hosted a little dinner in, uh, in the uh, entranceway last night. It was a great community event, spectacular views, a reflection of the place that, you know, we, we've got basketball courts and a track and a climbing wall and all the things that were sort of the original impetus of things for the body, but we've got things for the mind and the spirit too, engaged classrooms, a reflection center for uh, meditation, prayer, whatever your perspective may be, uh, from a faith perspective or a secular perspective, it'll be a really great place for the, the place of, of the mind and the spirit in addition to the body. Please come and check it out. Uh, be, uh, come and join us with our ribbon cutting today at 2 and a set of great activities to get everyone uh, uh, introduced uh, to that. Then uh, we have our Employee Appreciation Night. Uh, we're taking on the U of U at uh, Brent Brown Ballpark on April 22nd at 6 p.m. And we'd love to have you come and cheer on the Wolverines there. I'm especially excited about commencement. As I told you, we're going to be honoring our great Olympic athletes. We have a terrific set of honorary degrees to uh, offer to other people. We're going to be uh, thanking uh, some of our legislative leaders for their help this year. And we have uh, this really wonderful speaker lined up. Wes Moore, uh, great, uh, interesting story here. A man who one day sort of discovers, encounters a, a, an announcement about someone named Wes Moore. It sort of catches his attention. It's his same name. Uh, and then it turns out sort of his same profile, same racial profile, socioeconomic um, background, neighborhood issues. Uh, but this article was about an, uh, another Wes Moore whose life ends up very different than his. And he talks about choices and moving forward and finding your way uh, in the midst of, you know, challenge and, and difficulty. And it's, uh, by all accounts, extremely inspiring and plays nicely into some of the focus we've had uh, this year and will continue on into next year with our inclusion initiative. And so uh, I, th I think this will be something you, you will not want to, you'll not want to miss. Uh, then we've got Summer University coming up uh, on uh, uh, Monday through Wednesday, May 19th through 21st. Uh, another great set of uh, classes, uh, service activities, um, and so please uh, mark that for your calendars and see um, uh, sign up for uh, the, the things that we're offering there. Okay, uh, legislative victory. Uh, really want to take a minute to explain kind of what happened here this year, what it means, how we're, how we're responding to it. Let me do it by uh, going back to what the problem has been at UVU. Um, as you can see, uh, we uh, have been in a very difficult position. Uh, and there are a lot of reasons for the, the graphs that are, are, are before you. Uh, whether you count it by a price per full-time equivalent student, uh, we're at the, we, were, we were in the basement, uh, you know, two or three years ago at $2,800 per head. Uh, again, a lot of reasons for that. Some of it, victim of our own success. We kind of went into the four-year business saying we can do it on the cheap, and we did. Uh, some of it, just regional politics, who's got, you know, certain power and play at certain years. And, and, uh, and then more recently, we've grown so fast during... Uh, at times of economic challenge, and we have a mission of open enrollment, and so we've been asked to, to kind of keep that uh, mission uh, going, even in the face of growth and not extra tax funds, and we found a way to make it work. But as, as we've been arguing louder and louder every year, we were just getting to the point where we could not keep doing that. We were getting so dangerously lean, and you can see what was happening to the percentage of our budget coming from the state. And so, uh, so we went to work on that, and um, as you can see, uh, this year 
uh, in 2011-12, we, we just, we just you know, made that argument saying you've got to do something and help uh, with a more equitable distribution. Well, you know, politics is politics. We're a public institution. The only way we could get equity was if everybody get, got some equity, uh, you know, go figure. Uh, but it did do something important. It stopped the free fall. And that was critical because we really were in a, in a condition of free fall. So I was grateful for that. We got about a, uh, you know, about a million dollars and at least stopped us from going uh, farther down. And then the year after that, we continued to make our arguments and we got $2 million. And that at least started the curve back up. But the minute the session ended last year, we went to work on the session for this year to say, look, we're appreciative of the equity help that you've given us, but this is not enough. And we appreciate that we're a public institution and part of a system, but we have a problem here and it's more serious than at any other institution and you've got to do something to help us. And so we started to work with the chairs of the Higher Ed Appropriations Committee back in last April, literally starting after the session started, and working with the Speaker of the House and the Governor, and, uh, and making the argument that what we needed was um, acute equity, that, yeah, there might be in some fashion equity issues at all institutions, but there are some that were much worse off than others. And so this was the year that you've just got to do something major in a way to fix this problem for us. So uh, we went into the session uh, with that uh, uh, ambition in mind, and uh, we also provided the speaker with an extra large gavel, thinking <laughs> maybe that would help. It apparently did. Uh, so, um, so we went in with all guns blazing after truly a year's worth of work uh, under our belt, arguing for acute equity, and also something that was right up there with equal importance, and that was to ask for uh, compensation dollars. These are two separate pots of money, uh, and we said, you know, we, we've got to have uh, more support for, uh, for our employees, and so those were our, our two biggest uh, uh, initiatives, if you will, going into it. So what happened in this legislative session? So uh, on the compensation front, uh, we got uh, uh, a 1.25% COLA approved by the legislature, the funding for that, a little over a million dollars. Now this is what the government did for all uh, employees. We asked as presidents for a 3% adjustment, and we lobbied hard and argued for that, and in the end, uh, we got 1.25. It wasn't what we asked for, but there was a victory in this, I believe, which is that for the first time since I've been here, there wasn't a question about would higher ed get the COLA or not. You may remember previous years, uh, us kind of leading some of the fight to say, if you're going to do something for other state employees, you've got to do it for UVU. And so that appears to have worked. We were treated like every other employee. I wish it were more, uh, but uh, we're grateful that we got what we got and that we were a part, part of that uh, pool. Uh, there was some money given for uh, medical premium increases and uh, money that went into uh, the Utah uh, uh, retirement system. Now, there was a little bit of money we got for a reallocation within the UCHI system and in response to actually some things we did the previous year to support some other institution that's come back to pay some dividends for us. So it's a little bit of money and every dollar counts. And we got a, a little bit of money for uh, risk management and fleet support. Um, we, as we got into mission-based funding, there were two asks here. One was for distinctive mission. This is a category where we are invited to make proposals uh, with, uh, with respect to areas that the legislature is especially keen on. It's not the biggest pot of money, but it's an opportunity to get some money, and I'll take you through what we, uh, wh where the areas where we are invited to uh, submit proposals for, but we got nearly a million dollars there. Uh, we'd asked for just a little over a million and got a little under a million and it allows us to do some of the things that we proposed there. Of course, the big win, acute equity, 21 million dollars. Uh, <laughs> a 
This really is uh, the kind of historic, monumental uh, uh, goal that we had in mind, to really start to make the difference and catch up here at UVU and allow us to do the things that we've been uh, asked to do. And so um, uh, the, the total of all of this comes to $24 million of, of new ongoing funds. And again, to put that uh, in perspective, um, it started with an effort, again, to say, you've got to do something more for UVU than you do for any other institution. And our first victory was, was really coming out of the summer with an agreement like this at the system level. This was on the uh, uh, equity fund. Remember, the previous two years, everybody had a little piece of the action on equity. This year, we got an agreement to say, not only do you know, four institutions entirely sit, sit out, including the big dogs in the show, so to speak, uh, but then UVU, of those that gets money, gets 42% of that equity line. And so this really did the very most to help UVU, and it also did a lot to help Slick, which was following sort of close on our heels with an equity problem. And for that alone, I think it was uh, uh, a very, uh, uh, you know, again, I keep using the word historic, but for the system to come together and to forge that kind of compromise uh, was really the first breakthrough. And we had legislator after legislator say the fact that the system hung together made a big difference in, uh, in accomplishing that. So uh, I, I, I say that uh, we should be grateful. This was a moment, uh, there, were a lot, there were a lot going, a lot involved here, but this was a moment where colleagues and institutions came together and acted as a system for the good of a system that redounded to our good more than uh, anybody else. And so I'm, I'm very grateful to my colleagues who, uh, who were able to be brought along uh, on that front. Um, Again, in uh, just the kind of the sweep of things in past years to appreciate what that $24 million price tag is like, um, uh, if you look at the last eight years uh, and the funding that we've had from the legislature, that starts to give you uh, uh, a sense of how that matches up in a comparative sense. If you start to stack this stuff, um, you'll see that even if you total the last eight years for the full amount, I think I said something in a university memo to you earlier that the equity piece was equal to the last eight years, but if the, the full total is more than eight years, uh, and if you add the ninth year on, you're just a little over $24 million. So uh, this is uh, uh, just, I just hope we all recognize uh, the significance of this moving forward and what it gives us a chance to do. And I do want to um, uh, note that it brings us back out of that, uh, that terrible sloop we were in at 38%, and I, th I thought I just, <laughs> just sort of captured something for me there. So, uh. It's cause for happiness, uh, uh, for sure. Now, as you can see, uh, the, the line is not perfect. Uh, we've still got some room. This does not solve all of our problems. We're not wildly wealthy now, but we are back on track. And we're going to be in a position to fix some things and do some things that we've needed to do for a long time. So uh, I want to just publicly thank a, a bunch of people uh, involved. Uh, yeah. Uh, starts, uh, the governor, uh, as you know, was on this campus to announce his budget in part because his highest funding priority within the higher education budget was the equity line. Uh, a huge shout out to Speaker Lockhart. Very early on, she was one who got in dialogue with the system and with the legislative chairs to say, I want to see something on equity this year and it's got to be significant. She really got behind it. And then in the 11th hour, in those negotiating moments, she was the one who really lifted things up and uh, got it up to uh, that, that significant level of where it needed to be. We all really uh, owe uh, Speaker Lockhart a, a great uh, uh, vote of thanks for what she's done. Our two chairs, Steve Urquhart uh, from Dixie, I think was going for Utah County Legislator of the Year. 
really put his heart and soul into making this work. Joined by Keith Grover, a good Utah County legislator. They worked well together on this. They fought like lions for it. There were a number of moments of up and down uh, where, where we sort of were back to where we started from and was it all going to fall apart and lots of last minute back and forth and uh, great help. Dan Campbell uh, from uh, Board of Regents uh, and a local here who loves this institution brought great leadership from the Regents side and, uh, and, and, and then brought the power of the Regents to bear on the legislative uh, session came up uh, a, a number of times so we're, we're very thankful for Dan Campbell and his leadership. Then internally, uh, I just couldn't be surrounded by a better team uh, when it comes to this kind of thing. Started with Cam uh, Martin, who was uh, at my side the minute the legislative session ended last year, helping to set up those meetings with the chairs and the legislative leaders. I think, as you all know, uh, with, with great sadness, we watched uh, Cam go through a, a real health scare. We're glad that he's uh, working his way through that. He's back on campus. Chris Taylor stepped in in a truly remarkable way, seamless fashion, had never really done much of this before, but stepped up to the plate, uh, knows the institution, used great judgment, uh, kind of set aside his duties. I was really impressed with that. Just uh, sometimes I'd get asking him about communications issues. He says, you know, that's not my job anymore. Uh, uh, and uh, stayed focused where we needed him to stay focused and uh, did a great job. Linda Macon is this um, great uh, behind the scenes operator for the legislator uh, on the legislative front. She's watching those hearings, listening to things, picking up the budget conversations, helping us with data and arguments. And then of course Val Peterson. Val is so well respected on the Hill. He's a trusted figure. You know, it'd be easy to, in some ways, dismiss him here as he's just from the home team, so to speak, but he's got such respect from his colleagues that uh, it really carries a lot of weight. And he's not in the particular committees, but he's got great uh, influence there with uh, key uh, opinion leaders and leadership and, and plays that sometimes very difficult and challenging role with, uh, with great judgment. We had uh, our PACE organization go up formally and lobby. We had UVUSA go up on the hill and lobby. We had a number of our trustees, including one who's here today, Elaine Dalton. Please wave, Elaine. Uh, she personally went up. And our, uh, our chairman, Steve Lund, and then I talked to numerous faculty who wrote letters, got involved in the uh, convention process, uh, uh, just did a lot. There were just so many people to thank. So to, the, to this team, this great organization, one, one more round of applause for this historic accomplishment. Ladies and gentlemen, the president doesn't know what I'm doing, so he's having palpitations at the moment. Uh, there's one picture that was missing off that previous slide, and that was the picture of our president, who, uh, yes. Who I can tell you, uh, there were some quiet moments with just some individuals that he held the line, put his heels in and said, this must happen. Acute equity must happen this year. And so that's, uh, that's truly a mark of a great leader. Uh, and he was also touted uh, in the p local papers as the Rottweiler on the pant leg of the legislature. <laughs> so. And as a mark of that, we ordered a lapel pin of a Rottweiler. <laughs> I can't get this off. I'll put it through the hole. Okay. Yeah. We're standing for it. Well, that was unexpected. Uh, thank you, Cam. And don't ever do that again. <laughs> uh, sort of frightening. Uh, uh, well, um, I've said this before. It's easy to represent Utah Valley University, even when it's hard. 
because I just can't think of a more deserving set of faculty, staff, and students that uh, anyone could be associated with. And so it truly is my great honor to represent you, fight for you, defend uh, what we're doing here. Justice was on our side, and, uh, and I think we prevailed. And I, I thank you all for making it a fight worth fighting for. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, okay, so what are we going to do with $24 million? Uh, I've already been on record saying I'm not sure if it's harder to be a president with money or without money. I will say people are a lot friendlier to me right now, so uh, don't think I'm not noticing. Uh, uh, okay, uh, this is where it gets a little uh, complicated, but let's, uh, let's get into it. Um, so, on the compensation front, we got a little over a million dollars uh, from the legislature for a, a cost of living. So that 1.25% uh, for everybody across the board on compensation. Uh, but in the, in the formulas that exist as they are, that 1 million is only 75% of what it takes to get to pay you all a 1.25 COLA. So we were forced to uh, raise some tuition to make up the 25%. That's the way the formula works. 75 comes from state tax funds, 25% from tuition. I was really hoping uh, that we could keep tuition as low as possible. That was one of the promises extracted with the legislature, frankly, that if we got a lot of equity money that we would not raise tuition, would use it to try to keep tuition down, which we're committed to doing, and we'll, I'll sh share you with some specifics on that shortly. But we did have to raise it some uh, to, uh, to, to, do, uh, to do the 25%. And a couple of other things that really still had to be done on, on the compensation front. So uh, with some targeted salary uh, equity and merit money. So uh, we, we signed on to a, uh, a first-tier tuition of 4%, meaning everybody across the system did a 4% first-tier tuition. And we said, okay, we'll do that in order to finish paying the COLA and to do some of this targeted equity retention stuff. But beyond that, we're not raising tuition anymore. So it's uh, our lowest uh, tuition uh, hike in a decade. And that's as it should be with our mission of access and to say what we've always said, what we've had to raise tuition higher than we wanted to because we weren't getting state funding. But we got more state funding, so we shouldn't be raising tuition. So uh, that tuition allows us to match the COLA and do a couple of other things. And then there, there was one thing on the acute equity. Again, we, our, our explicit mandate agreement with the legislature, we, we weren't allowed to use equ the equity funds for compensation dollars with one exception. There was one area of, the, uh, of our compensation front where we are so far out of market we said the only way we can fix this or come close to fixing this is to use acute equity money, and that's for uh, our adjunct faculty rates. And so uh, we're going to make a, uh, an effort on that. So um, medical benefits, uh, some, uh, also some good news here. Um, there's no premium uh, deductible copay or coinsurance increase this year. So uh, your cola will be a clean cola, and, uh, and, and why is this? Well, uh, for one, our, our usage was lower than projected and better than last year, so uh, we had a healthier year. Some of that, that's, we just know as a self-insured, there are just always going to be these peaks and valleys. It is a reminder to us that it's all in everyone's best interest to be uh, as healthy as we can. That's why we actually didn't have as many sandwiches here today as we planned. Uh, now the truth is out. Uh, so there's that. But there, I will also say that part of the story here is, is uh, just the proactive uh, steps that we took in response to some of the uh, energy from last year about what was happening to costs. And so 
We did engage in a long uh, process with a, an expanded committee and some open campus dialogues, including one that we had uh, yesterday to say, could we do things different? We put out an RFP for our providers and we, we've got new plans and administrators and enhanced tools and services that are already contributing to the savings that meant uh, no, uh, no increase. It also gives us expanded coverage and options and, and, uh, and uh, facility uh, operation uh, options moving forward. So um, what we're going to do with that then is you'll get the 1.25 uh, COLA plus a $250 base increase across the board. You remember that little line item that the, the state gave us a uh, little bit of money for medical premium increase. Well, since we didn't have an increase, we're just going to pass that along to you directly uh, on an equal uh, basis per employee at $250. So, uh, and then on the adjunct faculty front, uh, we're going to make a 12% increase uh, to pay rates to be more comparable uh, with regional universities. That will be funded through the 1.25 COLA and uh, a decent chunk of that uh, acute equity money, which I'll talk about in uh, just a moment. But I'm very glad. This is the, we've been working on this for five years. This is a very significant shift over the last five years. I don't know the numbers I'm looking at. Do we, do we 25, 30% hike uh, at least, I think, at this point uh, that we've uh, been able to do for adjuncts that really get them up into the rates that, uh, that we've wanted to and that the market is calling for. Um, hourly and staff, uh, we haven't uh, forgotten them, so a two and a half increase to, to uh, pay rates for our uh, hourly employees. So um, that's sort of across the board. Now in terms of the targeted uh, things, uh, a few, few other things to call out here. On the salaried faculty side, we've had an equity initiative there. again equity in a little different way, not that we can pull out of those acute equity dollars, but, but can we use some of those uh, tuition funds and others to, to fix some of the equity issues we have on the salaried side? So this is according to the plan that's been at work uh, with academic affairs to take all non-terminally qualified faculty, at least those in good standing as approved by academic affairs and HR, to 80% of the market median. Uh, the terminally qualified get them to at least 90% of the market median. Uh, we're going to be able to uh, make a really a substantial, almost complete progress on that uh, this year. Move our salaried summer ICHE to 3% of uh, average faculty salaries. That's an increase of over 4.3% on salaried summer. Um, and then some key uh, retention and merit. So we've got rank and tenure promotions that we have to do and pay for. And then uh, just a few targeted adjustments for people who've had an exceptionally good year or have another offer from another institution that we need to try to match. Uh, this gives us a little bit of uh, funding to do that. On the salaried staff side, uh, similar market equity initiative. Here uh, we're looking at, on the exempt side, getting to a minimum of 80% of the market if you've been here more than four years but less than eight. Uh, beyond uh, eight, the 90% of the market uh, median. Um, on the non-exempt side, uh, greater than three but less than six get to the 90% uh, of the median. Uh, so uh, we're going to, again, make, uh, make progress on the equity side for staff. And then uh, similarly, key retention, not across the board, a few individuals who've had unusually Great year, uh, great year of contribution, or uh, we, we risk losing to another uh, institution or organization, we'll have a little bit of flexibility for the vice presidents to approve some, uh, some bumps there. And then uh, same uh, with, uh, with the, on the executive side, some, uh, again, targeted, not across the board, equity and retention uh, elements on, on the executive side. Uh, there's a link that you can go to. And that says that there is one, but we're not going to tell you where it is. So uh, if you want to go to the details, just think link, and your mind will go there. It's new technology. It's very impressive. Uh, yeah. In summary, then, uh, no medical premium increase, no plan changes, an additional $250 to everyone to help on the, from the medical premium savings, 
cost of living of 1.25 for everyone, and then some targeted equity and retention increases. And when you sum all that up together across the different divisions, it will mean on average, not per individual, but on average, that salaried faculty would get a 3.6 bump, salaried staff 3.7, uh, executives 3.6, adjunct 12.7, and uh, hourly staff 2.5. So uh, I, I wish we could do more, but I think it's a good year, it's the move in the right direction, and I hope that's uh, helpful to people. So again, reminder, we move into open enrollment uh, here shortly through May 16th, and there's a benefits fair to uh, get you up to speed on, on issues uh, related to that. Okay, now uh, into uh, kind of uh, where this uh, money uh, goes that we've gotten this year. So um, nearly $2 million uh, comes with uh, O&M associated with the new classroom building. That's a very big building, and it takes a lot of folks to kind of keep it running. Uh, over 19 positions that range from HVAC to needed custodial grounds and police. So uh, we'll be uh, 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 filling those positions uh, over the summer. Uh, fuel and power utility supplies. So there's a, a, a couple million dollars to uh, support uh, that. Um, uh, and that, again, that's separate. That's O&M money that comes off of a, a, a separate funding stream from those that we talked about, acute equity and whatnot. Under distinctive mission, you, me you remember I said we uh, asked for a little over a million, got a little under a million. We were invited to pursue, put in proposals in areas related to participation, completion, and economic development. So under participation, uh, we need to improve our um, admissions registration process. This gives us some money to do that. We've got a great little project going on helping uh, a broad swath of younger students get STEM ready. That's been an area of strategic focus, uh, and this will help with that. We've got a big push on for completion. Uh, we've got a, a scholarship program we're going to pilot here. We do a lot to get people in the front door with scholarships. We want to try to do a little bit to give some money on the back end to say if you'll finish, if you'll stick around this semester and get done, if you're in real financial crisis, maybe there'll be some money for you on that. Uh, as well as continuing to support our uh, recent uh, pilot initiatives of the freshman convocation retention mentors, which are already showing to be very successful in creating a completion-oriented culture here. And then on economic development, it's part of our, our state mission mandate, uh, but we've said, fine, we want to do it, but you need to help us pay for it. Some money there to help us uh, fulfill uh, our obligations related to cybersecurity grant and to do some really innovative things with an Institute for Innovation and a business acceleration program that the legislature is very excited to support us in and have us, have us doing. Okay, acute equity. This is the, this is the big daddy, obviously. How, how are we gonna spend this $21 million? Well, here are some guiding principles that uh, we are adopting in, in our decision-making process. First and foremost, as with every budgeting decision that we have here at the institution, uh, we uh, want to take um, uh, 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 cues from our mission, our core themes. Does it help us get more serious, more engaged, more inclusive? Does it help us with our administrative imperatives, operate effectively? And so uh, th those just are standard in the lens through which we always look through our budget decisions. Beyond that, though, this was, again, public process, agreement with the legislature. There were certain things that we uh, talked to the legislators about that were contingent or become contingent for our acute equity spending. We have to keep our eye on that as we move forward. We'll be asked for an accountability with the legislature about how this money gets spent. Some of the things that uh, they wanted to see can you show improved retention and completion rates? That's something we want to do and should be doing anyway. Uh, we want you to provide and meet student demand and, and, and regional, uh, student regional demand. What is industry asking for? How do, you, how do you maintain accessibility? We want you to keep tuition low. That's part of your mission. And so we're giving you this money in order to help you do that. Uh, that said, we're, we're a serious institution. We want increasing academic rigor and expectation, and so uh, and and they want that too, and want to see what we're doing to help uh, move that forward. Uh, and then we just know it takes some basic uh, human 
uh, resource and technology resources to operate in the age that we live in uh, and with an institution of this size. And so uh, we're able to show some things that we're doing there. Beyond that, uh, we've had this four-year planning process. We've always said it's hard to do the planning process in the absence of any you know, additional resources. We now have some additional resources, so we want to go back and revisit those plans. How can we make progress? Obviously not enough money to do everything that's in everyone's four-year plans, but there are some funds now to say we can start to move in some of those directions, and we should be. We should be strategic. We're not just going to let a thousand flowers bloom. We're going to have to continue to be efficient, make choices. There are trade-offs. If we're really going to achieve some excellence and accomplishment with this institution on the public funding mo model that we have, we can't abandon the careful, innovative, and strategic thinking that we've done that's gotten us thus far. Um, and then we need to be ready for future funding models. Uh, one of the things that, the, that some of our legislators were willing to do here is to say, we'd like to move to a performance-based model where we will fund you based on what you accomplish rather than what you say you will do. And we've said, well, frankly, before we can have that, even consider that, you've got to get us up to the starting line. If you're going to start to fund us based on a finish line performance, you can't do it with UVU sitting 50 yards behind everybody on the funding. That was a big part of the argument here. So we need to be conscious of, given the help they've given us, how do we make sure we invest in such a way that gets us up to the starting line so that wherever we start to get measured, we'll be ready to make, uh, make good on. Well, there will be more to talk about that. I don't want to, it, the, the performance-based model, I don't think will be sweeping and become the model moving forward, but it's going to be an important piece of it, and we need to be on top of that uh, as we move ahead. And then the other message I, I really want to get through is we, we've been in a bit of a lull right now on growth, and frankly, it's been a good thing. I mean, I know last year was difficult. The budget cuts were tough, and no one knows that as well as I do. But in some ways, it's, I think it's proving to be a helpful thing that we didn't have as many students, that our enrollments have gone down, and especially now that enrollments have gone down in a year where we've gotten money. But, uh, and in the same year that we're, we're expanding buildings and we're going to be able to have some room to expand. But that growth is coming back. And so we need to be thinking now, what are the investments we need to make so that when that growth does come back, we'll be ready and not just back into some you know, uh, frenzied, you know, keep up, uh, with, uh, keep up with growth mode. So that needs to be part of our analysis. And then finally, to, in order to do all of this, I felt it was very important that we not try to spend all this money right away. So I'm not about to show you $21 million worth of expenditures. In fact, we're spending a lot less than that right now. And we're going to seek... Uh, okay. We want to sequence this over stages so that we can do it thoughtfully and so that we can really take our time with your input and dialogue and analysis in a data-driven way that will allow us to pursue these guiding principles rather than trying to do something where, you know, we get a number in March and all of a sudden we didn't know what it would be and then we magically show up in May with a budget. There's no way you can adequately, thoughtfully fund a strategic uh, institution like that, like ours, uh, on that kind of time frame. So how, how are we thinking about it? What we presented to leadership last month was, was the following proposal, that we would only try to spend about four to seven million dollars uh, on, uh, on this initial cut uh, of kind of base ongoing funding. And then uh, we might spend as much as nine to eleven million dollars on one-time expenditures with the idea that we'd get some things into the base fix some one-time stuff, and then we can come back later and put that back to base uh, uh, later as, as, we, as we've had more time to think about it. That's what, that was what we said our goal was for this spring, the, the, the moment we're in right now. Then what, we're, what we've proposed is to do something we've never done before, which is have a, a sort of a mini fall PBA moment where we would spend uh, some more money on base, another four to seven million dollars on base, and possibly another five to six million on one time. Now, why this? Well, because one of the things that's key for us in our budget expenditures, given what we've promised about retention and completion, building up quality programs, is we've got to hire a bunch more faculty. But 
we're now past the real optimal hiring phase for faculty. And so there are some positions we need to fill right away, and you're going to see that. But what I want to do is give academic affairs effectively the summer to think about this and come back in the fall to make a pitch for faculty positions that we can then get approved, and then they can go on the market and, uh, and advertise for and hire during the coming year. And while we're doing that, there may be some other things. It won't be a faculty-only budget, but that'll be, that's, that's really what's driving the timing of this. And as other divisions look and consider things that they also think and, and can argue are crucial and, and complementary to what we're doing, we'll take a look at those two and make those decisions in the fall. And then that would leave us, come next spring, to look at base allocations of still uh, of another 8 to $10 million dollars uh, with uh, an estimated one to three left over for some one-time projects. And that's without considering what may happen next year to tuition or the legislative front. So it really does give us a, a very nice series of steps to make uh, some substantial decisions, but it gives us the time to do that. So that's, that's how we've approached this philosophically. So uh, what have we done then this year? So under the acute equity front, uh, of improving retention and completion, uh, we looked at we've uh, spent about 1.2 million on base and about 125,000 one time. A bunch of uh, faculty appointments in uh, emergency services, um, ASL, humanities, digital cinema, ballet, uh, elementary education, legal studies, business communications. Uh, we've also talked about we need more advisors. We want to get those hired, four advisors across criminal justice, technology and computing, MBA and athletics. Some more support for learning communities and supplemental instruction. Uh, some more money into uh, undergraduate research. Not as much as was asked for. That would be part of me, you know, asking academic affairs to go back and say, let's think about the various ways that we want to try to support different initiatives, but enough to get... Uh, get that on, a, on an expanded base funding, um, and then uh, director of uh, uh, field programs, community outreach, or outreach coordinator. Um, under uh, the provide access to programs and courses for a broad range of students, 1.4, uh, 1.1 million expanded capacity of STEM programs. This is a big regional demand right now. We have just industry coming relentlessly saying, oh, we've got to have more talented and trained uh, workforce here. So uh, five faculty in these areas, statistics, biotech, tech management, computer science, and ERT. Um, implementing new academic programs, moving to the MBA uh, day program uh, over three semesters, two faculty, and a faculty member for uh, making progress on our autism initiative. And then um, increasing the capacity of existing programs in technology and computing with distance add some uh, money to add some additional sections. We want to champion uh, learning in an academically rigorous environment, an, uh, almost $2 million there. And the big chunk of that is adjunct faculty, okay? If we're going to, we rely heavily on them, we've got to pay them by market rate, so we hire people who are well-trained and well-prepared to do this. That's just going to cost some money. So that's almost the bulk of that $2 million, but with some other monies left over for additional resources for the library and uh, academic software, classroom media, et cetera. Uh, technology and some basic human resources just to help us carry that out. That's a, a big part of what we do, and it's, it's not cheap. Uh, about $2 million there with uh, another $1 million in one time. So some software, IT support things for the classroom building, infrastructure, data security, wireless, virtual cloud, uh, moving to the virtual cloud. Uh, just uh, we've, These are things we've needed to do for a long time. Now we're in a position to do. Some basic staffing support, five uh, new administrative assistants, um, an equal opportunity um, officer for uh, uh, HR. Uh, poor Mark Weisenberg has been wearing, basically doing two jobs uh, for a long time now. This gives some immediate needed relief there and is a part of our reflection of our continuing commitment to an inclusive environment, make sure we're treating everybody fairly and right and uh, legally. New mental health therapist and a, a much needed marketing designer. Uh, as we think about our core themes, uh, again, about another million dollars there and half million of one time. 
Uh, we need to be able to attract and retain uh, a great faculty, so we need more sophistication in our compensation. We need some staffing uh, help to be able to do that, salary surveys, training materials, uh, uh, doing employee appreciation, uh, support for things like that. Our university marketing, we've got some big things coming up to get our, our story out uh, with our 75th anniversary and helping the community understand just how good we really are. And uh, on the engage front, uh, community outreach partnerships, our global spotlight, uh, our MBA international experience, uh, some funds uh, going to there, uh, to our Native American initiative, giving some base funding support to that. Uh, multicultural student scholarships and some operating funds, ASD mentors, and some additional base support for Gear Up and Trio. Again, the details of this will be accessible. I think there actually is a link. I'll show you that later. Um, and you can get the specifics uh, on that. Um, administrative imperatives. Uh, this is, a, this is a, a big striking number here, so let me take a minute to explain that. There's about a million dollars worth of stuff we need to fix infrastructurally. Uh, chemistry lab ventilation that has to be done, a roundabout reconstruction out front, uh, an activity center uh, remodel. Um, but uh, the, the big expense, and that's why we've got f nearly $4 million at one time. When the new building opens, there's going to be a huge cascade effect. And we're still kind of working that out. We've had a space summit. We've got lots of dialogue going on. And we're just not in a position to, ex uh, to say and finally decide exactly where everybody's going to go and how things may shift. But we know there are going to be moving costs associated with that, places that will need to be remodeled and readjusted and expanded and walls knocked down here and paint put up there. So we're putting that in. We've got a rough estimate that that's going to cost about $5 million, but it really is going to allow for some great adjustment and movement around campus as we go fill up the classroom building and then backfill uh, existing space uh, here, in, here in this area. And there will be opportunities to do more beyond that even after the move. So. Um, on uh, uh, securing resources, we want to reduce general student fees. This is, again, we, we lowered tuition as low as we could, and then we've been able to shift some things uh, off of fees onto tuition without raising tuition. That has the net effect of lowering what was otherwise going to be the planned student cost. So that continues to be a, a really important commitment of mine that will will hold the line and keep uh, keep that price as accessible as possible for our students. Um, again, on the development side, we're already seeing the payoffs of investments in development. Sometimes you have to spend money to make money. We've done that. We're clearly getting a return on our investment. We think we can get even more. And so we've got a couple of additional staff functions that we're supporting there to support our much improved uh, fundraising activities. So to, uh, to kind of bring this back into perspective, how did we do on our range? We've spent about six and a half million dollars staying within that four to seven million dollar range. We're actually quite a bit lower on one time right now, but again, that's because we're not ready to really decide what needs to get remodeled or fixed right now. So we're going to just push that forward into the fall, give ourselves a little more time over the summer, and then uh, we'll let everything else adjust um, accordingly. So, hey, there's a link. Uh, um, you go to the link, uh, you, can, uh, you can get the details. Uh, again, that's a lot of information. I'm moving very quickly. Uh, in some ways, it's, it's too broad. Other ways, maybe not broad enough. But I hope that gives you the sense and the flavor of, of where we're going and, and what we're doing. And in the spirit of transparency, you're welcome to go look at this stuff online, uh, raise questions, issues, continue the dialogue with us as we move forward. One closing note uh, as we finish up here. Uh, it was very fun at the beginning of this hour to stand and talk about all of those great student accomplishments here and there and the programmatic prowess, uh, the, the national accomplishment and prestige of, of, of what we're doing and becoming known for. But in some ways, uh, I, I saved the best for last. There's a story here that just for me really captures the essence uh, of Utah Valley University in so many ways. Uh, this is Michael Nagale, and we just heard from him recently. Uh, he's a graduate student uh, in the sciences, and uh, he's a Native American student. And uh, he wrote his professors here at UVU 
to say that he had just received an NSF grant. And NSF grant is the highest, most prestigious uh, grant you can get in the sciences. Well, Michael Nagale, Native American student here at a university that has a conscious Native American outreach program, came here and began in our developmental math program. He was not ready for college. And that great developmental math program brought him in, got him equipped, gave him the confidence that he could go off and study physics and math as a fully qualified college student. And along the way, he no doubt had tutors. He no doubt took writing courses and history courses and got a good broad general education. And then those great faculty in math and physics got him ready for graduate school. And now not only is he off working on a PhD, but he's competing for the most prestigious national grants in the nation in research, applied research projects. This is engaged, it's inclusive, and it's serious. This is UVU at its very best in its holistic fashion. And you're all the ones making this happen. And this is just one student whose life has been transformed by what we're doing it and the way we're trying to do it. We don't, you don't see enough of this in your life come back to, to show you what you're doing and what you're accomplishing. But it's happening over and over and over again for thousands of students. I take my hat off to you. I pay my tribute to you, to what you're doing. I offer you my absolute core conviction that we are on the right path, that we, we continue this path of openness and inclusiveness and outreach to every student at whatever level and we bring them here and we ask them to be serious. We ask them to give their very best and to do their very best and to achieve their very best to go off and have the best kind of life that they could have and they're doing it thanks to you. I give you my greatest tribute. Thank you.